Bonjour tout le monde. Thank you everyone for joining us here today. My name is Paul Lefebvre and I am the Member of Parliament for Sudbury. Before we introduce our guests of honour, I'd like to present a few of my colleagues here. We have Marc Serré, MP for Nelkebelt. We have MPP Glenn Thibault, as well as Your Worship, Mayor Bigger, and our colleague from Nipissing to Misgiving, Anthony Rota. This truly is an historic day for Sudbury. In electing a new government, millions of Canadians signal their desire for change. Our government was elected in part because we took that desire seriously. We offered Canadians an ambitious new plan for a strong middle class, investments in infrastructure, and a new relationship with our First Nations. We promised that we would do all of that so that we can have every Canadian succeed. I'm proud to say that Budget 2016 is an important part of fulfilling that promise. And that's why we're all here today. Monsieur le Premier ministre, re-bienvenue à Sudbury. Yes. Our Prime Minister is no stranger to Sudbury. I would even dare to say that he's the federal leader that has been here the most in Sudbury. So we're welcoming him back here again. Our Prime Minister knows, like we all do, that Sudbury is the mining capital of the world and is a global hub for mining innovation and technology. And that Sudbury is the cultural and artistic capital of Northern Ontario. Je dis toujours que Sudbury est un microcosme du Canada, bilingue, multiculturel, où ce que les arts et la culture règnent suprême. Mr. Trudeau knows that Sudbury's Snow Lab was the key to Dr. Art McDonald's winning the 2015 Nobel Prize for Physics, and that Sudbury is home to some of the most advanced environmental and green technology research in the world. In fact, a few weeks ago, Greg Fergus, Parliamentary Secretary to Navdeep Baines, was in Sudbury and left very impressed by the innovation and resourcefulness of Sudburyans. However, as we all know, while the creative sector in Sudbury is thriving, the resource sector is struggling. And I'm proud to say that Budget 2016 addresses these concerns. Ce budget offre une aide immédiate aux personnes qui en ont le plus besoin et établit les bases d'une croissance économique inclusive et durable au profit de la classe moyenne et de ceux et celles qui travaillent fort pour en faire partie. Mr. Prime Minister, I am proud to be on your team I'm I am very proud to promote Budget 2016 in Sudbury, and I'm proud to participate in today's historic announcement. Please join me, s'il vous plaît, vous joindre à moi pour accueillir le très honorable Justin Trudeau. Bon après-midi, tout le monde. Merci d'être là avec nous. Thank you for joining us today. It's great to be back in Sudbury. We just wrapped up an incredibly productive discussion here at Sudbury City Hall. I'm happy to have been joined by the Mayor, Provincial Representative Glenn Thibault, Federal Representatives Paul Lefebvre, Anthony Rota, and Marc Serre, along with uh, the Council behind us. We engaged in a robust discussion on the needs facing the people of Sudbury. Avant d'aller dans les détails de ce que nous avons accompli aujourd'hui, Je veux revenir un petit peu sur ce que les rencontres comme celle-ci veulent dire et pourquoi elles sont importantes. Comme plusieurs d'entre vous le savent déjà, notre nouveau gouvernement fédéral a été élu après avoir promis aux Canadiens du vrai changement à la fois dans ce que nous faisons et dans comment nous le faisons. Les Canadiens s'attendent à ce que leurs représentants de tous les ordres du gouvernement collaborent pour faire ce qu'il y a à faire. C'est vrai au fédéral, au provincial et au municipal. Les gens s'attendent à ce qu'ils travaillent ensemble pour obtenir les résultats que les communautés méritent. Mon gouvernement prend ce partenariat au sérieux. Pas seulement parce que c'est une attente à notre, à notre, à notre égard, mais parce que c'est le meilleur moyen de bien servir nos citoyens. Good decisions are born from communication and collaboration. And today's discussion here in Sudbury is a great example of just that. In our first federal budget, released just a few weeks ago, my government outlined $120 billion in infrastructure investment over the next 10 years. This funding will help to create good jobs, better our communities, and grow the middle class. So after discussion with representatives in Sudbury today, I am pleased to announce that the Government of Canada will invest $26.7 million in the Sudbury Maley Drive Extension Project. <laughs> it
In partnership with the Government of Ontario and the City of Sudbury, this investment will fund the creation of a new, much-needed east-to-west arterial link through the city. This important initiative will reduce traffic congestion, improve commuter safety, and get people home on time and take ore trucks off LaSalle. Uh, my government is proud to invest in Sudbury and the people that call it home. By working together, we can and will build a better future for the middle class and those working hard to join it. Thank you once again for being here this afternoon. Uh, my friend Marc Serré from Nickel Belt is going to say a few concluding remarks, and then I'll be back at the podium to take questions from media. Merci beaucoup. Avant que Marc, euh, oui, <rire> avant que Marc dise euh, des mots pour la conclusion, j'aimerais inviter M. Glenn Thibault. Um, there is no greater advocate for our city than our next speaker. Even before he was in public service, Glenn Thibault was someone I knew to be a strong and valuable community partner. In Toronto, he is parliamentary assistant to the Minister of Environment and Climate Change. In Sudbury, he is our member of provincial parliament. S'il vous plaît, accueillir Glenn Thibault. Please welcome Glenn Thibault. This is what happens when you mess with security. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. It's not my security. <laughs> <laughs> Mine are nice guys. <laughs> Sunny ways. <laughs> um, anyways, welcome to uh, Sudbury, Mr. Prime Minister. Um, the weather cooperated. We're calling it uh, Sprinter or other ways. We're, we're, we're dealing with that, but it truly is a pleasure for us to have you here uh, today. Uh, um, uh, here in Sudbury uh, on this announcement and this great announcement that we're doing. I know uh, provincially our government is committed to investing uh, in infrastructure and communities right across Ontario. This includes building and revitalizing roads, bridges and highways to improve commute times and make travel safer. Today's announcement is also part of the largest infrastructure investment in Ontario's history, $160 billion dollars over 12 years, creating an average of 110,000 jobs annually. Yes, thanks. As a, life, as a lifelong resident of Sudbury, I know how important the Maley Drive extension is to our city. We've heard about this project for over the last 30 years, and now it's finally becoming a reality. And the benefits just don't include reducing traffic flow on LaSalle Boulevard and the Kingsway. There will be more options for local drivers and alternate routes for mining companies. And let's not forget that 800 jobs will be created during this expansion and net economic value of over $135 million. That is why our provincial government is 100% behind this project as we reach out our hand in partnership to both the city and to the federal government. I really can't wait to see the shovels in the ground on Maley Drive. And there's so many of you here today that is great to come out and celebrate this announcement. I think you're also here to see the Prime Minister because <laughs> in the last eight years that I've been doing announcements as a politician, my wife has never come out to one and she's here today. <laughs> so it's great seeing her here. Thank you again. Thanks to uh, the federal government for partnering with us and the city. And I can't wait to see this in the ground. Thank you very much. Thank you, Glenn. Merci beaucoup. As we've heard, this is a significant announcement for Sudbury. Sudbury has been waiting for over 20 years for today's announcement. It would not be possible without the strong, dedicated commitment of our mayor, city council, and staff. Please welcome His Worship, Mayor Brian Bigger. Thank you, Paul. I would like to formally welcome you, Prime Minister Trudeau, to the city of Greater Sudbury. And I'm, thank you very much. <laughs> and I'm much shorter than you. Um, we're all very thrilled and very honored to host you here at Tommy Davies Square. Uh, bienvenue, Premier Minister Trudeau à la ville de Grand Sudbury. C'est un honneur. Welcome. And I'd like to acknowledge my fellow councillors who are all here in attendance today. 
Um, they've been a great source of uh, support in, in uh, bringing this Mailey Drive uh, project forward. Thank you for being here to share in this momentous occasion uh, for our community. Mailey Drive has been a priority of the city, as you've heard, uh, for over 25 years. La promenade Mailey a été une priorité la ville de Grand Sabri depuis plus de 25 ans. On behalf of Council and the residents of Greater Sudbury, I'd like to sincerely thank the government, government of Canada investment of over $26 million for the first phase of Mailey Drive. This, in conjunction with the provincial investment of the same amount through the Build Canada Fund and our investment, will allow us to proceed with the project. Thank you to Glenn Thibault and our provincial counterparts as well. The project is critical to the economy of Greater Sudbury. Ce projet est <coughs> essential à l'économie de Grand Sudbury. And why? It will create 780 jobs and save residents $11.1 million annually. It's forward thinking and will build not only to meet current demand, but future needs, a city for our children and our grandchildren. And I'm proud that the Government of Canada and the Province of Ontario have recognized the importance of this project and will invest more than $50 million in Greater Sudbury. Now is the time to invest in new projects, to grow and to succeed as a city, to contribute to our economy, to create jobs and build for the future. We see a vision of growth for our community and we want to see it flourish and succeed. Nous voyons une vision de croissance pour notre communauté et nous voulons la voir s'épanouir et réussir. We need to invest in our community to see it grow and as a council we're looking at other projects that will do just that as well. So Mr. Prime Minister, Mark, Paul, Glenn, you'll be hearing from us in the near future on a number of other items we'll be undertaking in our community. I know Council is keen to continue to invest in our infrastructure and this is just the beginning. Now I would be remiss if I didn't thank former Mayor Mad uh, Marianne Matichuk for her advocacy on this project. Thank you very much. as well as Tony Security, General Manager of Infrastructure Services, David Shellstead, Director of Roads and Transportation, and Jody Cameron on our project manager on this file for all of their hard work. All of these individuals, among many others, have contributed to the success of Mailey Drive and again, thank you to the Government of Canada and the Province of Ontario for this investment and faith in our community. It's truly appreciated by Council and the residents of the City of Greater Sudbury. Merci. Thank you, Mayor Bigger. As you've heard today, our government is investing in Canada and in Canadians. We're investing in, in, in industries, in students, in our cities. We're investing in Sudbury and the resourcefulness of Sudburyans. I know that I and my counterpart in Nickel Belt are very much looking forward to working with all of you to continue building this beautiful, smart, resourceful, and always exciting city of Greater Sudbury. So we'd like to yield. Please welcome my good friend and colleague, Member of Parliament for Nickel Belt, Marc Serre, to say a few words. Ah. The Lawrence. Merci, Paul. Good afternoon, bonjour, Annie. What a fantastic day to be here in Greater Sudbury, Northern Ontario. And Mr. Prime Minister, we have to do this again very soon. It's a tremendous honor and privilege to be co hosting with Paul, my colleague Anthony our Prime Minister today. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister, for your commitment to us. Thank you for hearing our message. Thank you for the time 
in your busy schedule, despite the weather, to be here in Northern Ontario and Greater Sudbury. Finally, Northern Ontario has a partner in Ottawa. Innovation and infrastructure investments are key to rebuilding Canada's economy. Votre dévouement envers nous comme député, Monsieur le Premier ministre, avec Paul, Anthony, moi-même et tout le caucus du Nord de l'Ontario, ainsi que le Grand Sudbury et le Nord de l'Ontario est très, très apprécié. Finalement, le Nord a un partenaire avec Ottawa. Voilà qui est essentiel à investir dans l'innovation, l'infrastructure pour rebâtir une économie canadienne. It goes without saying that a project like this does not happen overnight, nor is the work of one or two people. For many years since this project was conceived, there were a lot of people who added their voice to the chorus. I would like to acknowledge Mayor Brian Bigger, his council, the many councils before who kept Maley Drive number one on their priority list. Thank you to our provincial counterpart, Glenn Thibault, for securing that provincial contribution. Thank you to the greater city of Sudbury Chamber of Commerce, Debbie Nicholson, and the Board of Governors for advocating, advocating on this project from day one throughout, throughout all these years. Today, really sense a new era of optimism in Greater Sudbury and Northern Ontario. And thank you to the investments like the one that we're making today. Canadian communities will remain among the best places to, in the world to live, grow, and invest. Thank you again, Mr. Prime Minister, for your commitment to Northern Ontario, Nickel Belt, and Greater Sudbury. Merci, miigwech. Thank you. I'd like to call upon now our Prime Minister to answer questions from the media. Darren McDonald, Sudbury Northern Life newspaper. Uh, as you may be aware, uh, Maley Drive has been a priority for about 30 years, so it took a long time for uh, the funding to come through. What I'm wondering is uh, we have other infrastructure projects, arts, uh, infrastructure, uh, other roads. Is there a chance that we're going to get more sort of support in the current round of, of funding? But one of the things that uh, uh, we put forward as uh, an election platform, and indeed in this budget, uh, is a need to invest uh, in our communities to create opportunities for our citizens, to create uh, economic growth that's going to uh, give everyone uh, opportunities to succeed. Uh, and that's exactly what the federal government is going to do. It's not uh, up to us uh, to pick and choose what projects uh, communities like Sudbury want and need. It's up to us to work in partnership uh, with the province, uh, with the municipality, uh, to fund the projects that uh, you've prioritized. I had uh, an excellent conversation with uh, the uh, Council today uh, on issues uh, from uh, wastewater to roads to seniors housing and and uh, like that and we're certainly uh, going to continue to be a strong and active partner uh, in the coming months and years uh, to the community of Sudbury. Hello, I'm Carrie Trounson. I'm with CTV Northern Ontario, and I'm wondering if any of this infrastructure money that the federal government is allocating is going to <clears throat> any of our First Nations communities that, you know, desperately need infrastructure. For instance, Pekanjikum First Nation, where nine people just died. Uh, they don't have any roads. So is any money going to those communities? In uh, 2005, uh, Paul Martin signed uh, with uh, indigenous leaders from across the country, uh, the Kelowna Accord, uh, that was a landmark historic investment of $5 billion uh, that would address housing, uh, roads, infrastructure, education, uh, health care uh, needs uh, in indigenous communities across this country. Unfortunately, the government changed, and for 10 years we've had, uh, well, something that wasn't the Kelowna Accord, and uh, a lack of invest partnership by the government. That's why uh, in our very first government, uh, in our very first budget, 
uh, the Liberal Party put forward, the Liberal government put forward uh, a historic $8.6 billion of investment uh, in Indigenous communities, in education, in infrastructure, uh, in making sure uh, that everyone uh, across the country, including here in Northern Ontario, uh, gets the opportunity to succeed and is recognized as a full partner, uh, not just in Canada's present success, but in the future that we're going to build together. Merci. Prime Minister Terry Pedwell with the Canadian Press. I want to ask you a simple kind of personal question first before I get into a regional question. I um, wonder what your thoughts are on international tax havens and whether there's there any justification in your mind for national leaders to siphon away money into places where they can circumvent their own national tax laws. And do you, or your, any of your family members, have investments or money in an offshore account? Yes. Uh, no, no, we do not. Uh, I have been uh, entirely and completely transparent about uh, uh, my and, and my, uh, my family finances. Uh, that's something uh, that I understood from early on uh, Canadians expect of their leaders. A level of openness, transparency, accountability uh, that uh, demonstrates uh, not just uh, that we are worthy of Canadians' trusts, uh, but that we trust Canadians uh, enough to share uh, what, we, uh, you know, what we have as, uh, as uh, assets and finances. Um, obviously, the uh, Panama Papers are highlighting uh, some very real concerns that uh, people around the world have about uh, the fact that uh, extremely wealthy people have been very effective at avoiding uh, paying their fair share of taxes. And that's why in this budget, even before the uh, Panama Papers came out, uh, we had allocated an extra $440 million to the Canada Revenue Agency uh, to ensure that they are empowered to go after tax avoidance and tax evasion uh, in a comprehensive way, uh, which also uh, involves us and at the highest level engaging with uh, global uh, leaders around the world uh, to ensure that there is no place to hide anymore, that countries will all work together to ensure that everyone everywhere pays their fair share of taxes. Prime Minister, just a supplementary on the uh, regional issue, Ring of Fire. I'm just wondering, your budget mentioned that you were going to be speaking with provincial the provincial government and municipal and uh, First Nations governments about it. I spoke to an industry leader today who said that it's important to get this on ball rolling, at least to put roads into the region uh, by, by starting the middle of this summer. Do you think that's possible? We uh, have uh, committed to work with uh, regional, municipal, provincial partners uh, on priorities they put forward. We know that the Ring of Fire means uh, good jobs, means uh, continuing development of the North in ways that uh, hopefully will build the kind of sustained partnerships uh, with Indigenous communities that have been uh, too long uh, absent from the, uh, the economic growth landscape. Uh, and I look forward to having more to uh, say in, uh, with, uh, alongside uh, many partners uh, in the coming months. Olivia Stefanovic, CBC Radio. Prime Minister, during your campaign, you really emphasized green infrastructure and transportation. Here you are funding a big road. I was wondering if this fits with what you pledged in your election campaign. The single most important pledge I made around the economy and the environment was that we're not going to be making choices between the economy and the environment. That people understand that in order to build a strong economy for the present and for the future, uh, we need to make sure we're doing it responsibly and environmentally. Uh, for too long, politicians have picked one side or the other of the argument and laid out on it. We know that we need to create economic growth while we innovate and invest in the kind of clean technology and environmental solutions uh, that, quite frankly, is going to keep uh, uh, Canada uh, as a world leader. Uh, these are the kinds of things that we're investing in, and uh, we will continue to invest in growing our economy, uh, helping Canadians succeed, and making sure that our children and our children's children uh, have a protected natural environment that will continue to sustain uh, not just uh, our families but our economies uh, for generations to come. Uh, 
My name is Nick Liard with uh, Q92 and KISS 105.3, Rogers Radio here in Sudbury. Um, when you announced the, your, your funding announcement for infrastructure across Canada, how high was Maley Drive and, and Northern Ontario on your priority list? It's on the priority list, uh, and that's why we're announcing it today. Uh, there are important initiatives right across the country that uh, were uh, simply uh, not prioritized and not invested in, regardless of how priority they were, uh, for the previous government. Uh, you know, there was a, uh, there has always been uh, patterns at various times where governments like to announce monies they're investing and then create so many roadblocks or limitations or conditions that they get the advantage of having announced it and then never actually have to spend it. Uh, and I think uh, people rightly suspect that that's uh, what has gone on quite a bit over the past 10 years uh, out of the federal government. And that's why the commitment we made was to invest in our communities because for me, confident, optimistic places like Sudbury invest in their future because we know we have a bright future ahead of us. Uh, we roll up our sleeves, we'll get to work building uh, a better tomorrow for our kids and our grandkids. Uh, and that's exactly what this announcement is all about. Martine Laberge, Radio-Canada, mais je vous demanderai de bien vouloir répondre dans les deux langues officielles. La question est en anglais. Euh, ce soir, il y a une rencontre, en fait, euh, excusez, la question est en anglais, donc je parle anglais. <laughs> uh, how does the private uh, fundraising event tonight for Minister Wilson-Raybould fit within your open and accountable government code? We have uh, pledged and demonstrated a level of openness and transparency uh, that uh, no federal government has done before. Not only do we abide by all the rules and principles uh, and uh, engaged in fundraising, making sure there are no corporate donations, no uh, union donations, uh, that there are strict limits on how much an individual can donate, uh, examples that uh, uh, provinces are now looking at adopting as well because of the openness and transparency of what we do. Uh, we've also gone a step further as a party and uh, we are bringing in a new constitution uh, that will allow uh, anyone to sign up and become part of uh, the Liberal Party's deliberations and engagements and visioning of a better future uh, without having to pay any fees at all. Uh, this is an unprecedented level of openness, of transparency, of accountability that the Liberal Party has demonstrated and will continue to demonstrate uh, in the years to come. Uh, je suis, uh, j'ai toujours été Euh, très très clair que l'ouverture, la transparence, l'imputabilité est essentielle. C'est pour ça que nous suivons euh, toujours toutes les règles par rapport au financement électoral. Euh, il n'y a pas de dons corporatifs, il n'y a pas de dons euh, de, de, de syndicats. Euh, il y a des limites sur les dons euh, par les individus parce que les gens s'attendent à ce que euh, leurs euh, politiciens soient ouverts, redevables et intègres dans leur fonctionnement. Mais en plus de ça, le Parti libéral a pris la décision récemment, euh, et on, on va le ratifier au mois de mai, euh, d'ouvrir le parti complètement pour qu'on n'ait même pas besoin de payer euh, 10 dollars pour participer aux délibérations euh, du euh, Parti libéral. Pour devenir euh, euh, libéral enregistré, euh, on rend ça gratuit. Les autres partis, dont le Parti conservateur, ont décidé de prendre une autre route et vont augmenter euh, les coûts jusqu'à 25 dollars pour participer. Euh, je trouve que ce n'est pas la direction de l'ouverture et euh, de la transparence euh, que les Canadiens exigent. Merci. Last question, dernière question. Um, good afternoon, Prime Minister. My name is Mary. I'm from the Sudbury Star. I'm wondering if you can talk about federally why you decided to um, invest in Maley Drive and how it's going to inform the bottom line federally. Uh, excellent. Uh, first of all, uh, the federal government didn't decide to invest in Maley Drive. Um, I don't think it's up to the federal government to be telling Siberians where they need a new road. Uh, I don't think it's up to the federal government to be drawing lines on a map. I think it's up to the federal government to be listening uh, to the experts we have gathered here, uh, listening to strong voices from the municipal level, from the provincial level, who are uh, uh, thinking long and hard about uh, what priorities are going to advance opportunities for Siberians and for the entire region. Uh, that's why what I've committed to from the very beginning is to be a present and active partner uh, to municipalities, to the provinces, on investments that are needed. Uh, 
Uh, I want to know, uh, as the federal government steps up as a partner, that these are investments that are important to the community, that are part of a plan to grow the economy and create opportunities uh, for citizens and improve quality of life, which uh, we all know that Millet Drive uh, certainly qualifies as, as uh, contributing to. And on top of that, uh, we need to know that there is uh, a capacity to get it done responsibly. And this council and indeed municipality and province have demonstrated a capacity to get things done uh, and we are partnering with them on your priorities, uh, not the federal government's priorities. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. Merci tout le monde.